some cars in? Hey! So that's 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 real real deep in the heavy perspective in the very unique perspective of that. Because when I look at a I definitely think that there's a difference between a woman, a bitch and a hoe. My personal definition of what a woman is, a woman is someone like you said who a woman to me is a is a female who carries herself with respect. Who is intelligent, know how to use her mental, her smartness to get to where she want to get in life. A woman is someone who can go through any type of hurdles without giving up the core values of themselves, who give undying love, who submissive to their man, know how to play the role in the position of a household and let that man be that lead and be the king that he is. So that's my definition of a woman. Now, a bitch to me is a female who just carries herself with a demeanor that thinks that she's all that based off a status that was given to her or a status that she just fucked her way up to get. Okay. Whether it's one time or two. That she fucked her way up to get? Like, what you mean? Like, fuck some niggas to get into that to position? Get in that position. Whether it's like, I'm gonna bust a move. Who, who, will, who will look at her her body, her her things that she was blessed with as a as a tool, as a utensil to get where she wanna get. A, a, a female who has been really hurt and damaged, to me, is what a bitch is. You know, but try to hide that hurt and try to hide that, that damage and that vulnerability and this bravado of being a man. Cause you have a lot of women, like I said, who want to be men. Women smoking backwoods now and shit and all that. Like that's, you know, like, that's 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 how the roles have been switched. But a hoe, to me, you gave a perfect answer. Cause that's the definition and really what a hoe is. So you can't argue that. And I totally agree with that. And a hoe, to me, if I had to add to, or maybe that open up another topic, a female who gonna fuck to get what she got, make sure her bills is paid, make sure she's keeping up with the latest fashion, making sure she's fucking with this nigga to put her in position to do this. She gonna fuck this type of motherfucker. She'll run through this motherfucker, you know. Or is that a slut? I don't know. That's a renegade, okay. That's a renegade. But what if they not making no money? Because you got a lot of women who just love fucking just the fuck and just a run through whole motherfuckers but still got that man and like I run through niggas yeah, that's, a slutty bitch. that's a slutty bitch bitch I mean that's a bitch with the word slutty in front of it you know what I'm saying so for me it's kind of like you know we'll touch back on that woman aspect because we went there and then we'll go back into that slutty bitch you know because I I want to I want to you know the man leading the house also is like a big aspect of the woman like, and so when you brought that up, it's like 100%, but that comes with submission. And submission doesn't also mean or portray as someone sit down and shut up or. Absolutely. Um, know that you my know your role. Right. right. It's like, you know your role, you know this man is leading you, but you have to trust and believe that he's um, leading with love. You know, he's. True. He, He's leading with truth and um, and understanding. So my thing is, is like when you allow a man to lead, you see the biggest benefits from that. You know what I'm saying? I agree. Absolutely. So so and that's that's the woman aspect. So for me, it also like um, I feel like you know women need to stop being so masculine. You know, they're they're so masculine to the point where like. It's it's scary for it's scary for real leaders out here like men that want to lead household men that you know that been through every aspect of life you know what I'm saying so you know um, yeah and that's on a women's standpoint stop being masculine women it's not worth it but I, I definitely agree with that 
And I think, like I said, I just always go back to women have been forced to be like that due to the abuse and to the, the pain that a lot of their mothers went through and they see that. So it's like, damn, I see how moms went through it with these niggas shit. I'm, so I, I, but I definitely agree. I definitely so, agree. So why are we bringing trauma bonds into our new relationships? Because a lot of us don't go to counseling. We don't go to therapy. We like to handle it on our own. And, and that's where, as black people, we have so much ego. We got so much ego that we feel we don't need to go through this. So instead of going through it, we hide it. And then in the process of us hiding it, it end up catching up with us and hurting us in the long run. Okay, so let's normalize us going to therapy. Absolutely, I went. Let's, um, I did too. I'm in therapy now. Shout out to Dr. Uh, David Burton. You feel hey, me? That's my dog. Great, he's doing a you great job with him. Cause you know, he, you know, cause you know, I've been, I've been, I've been hiding from him for three weeks. You know what I'm saying? Cause you know. You know he uh, he he uh, he on some real shit, and I still got my toxic ways. But um, you know that's my dog. You feel me? But um, yeah, nah. He um, you know he recently just got married. Congratulations. And I, and I um, you know, with everybody, I speak highly of him. I also you know want to say you know that um, I was at a dark place in my life. You know what I'm saying? When he came in, you know, when I when reached out. Yeah, I was like, let me try something new. You know what I'm saying? Because certain elders that I talk to and vent to aren't here anymore. Right. So now I was like, let me think about someone who's not involved with my personal situation and reach out and see. A new voice. Exactly. So. Non-biased voice. Yes. So, you know. He be bringing that church into the uh, to the to the therapy a little bit too much, but you know, shout, you know, shout out to shout out to the church. Nice. Hey man, you know some of that shit works for me, some of it doesn't. But I but Absolutely. I'm true to myself though. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Like certain aspects of that just don't work for what I'm going through or what I need right now. Absolutely. You know, but he don't sugarcoat shit. He tell me how it is. So you know, he just recently got married, like I said. But um, he's the definition of like. A healed man someone who's teaching me how to communicate properly you know someone who's um, who's leading with love so his examples of his life is when you get that woman that you want or that woman that you need in your life you know how to direct properly you don't bring your old toxic ways into the new situation I agree that's real shit. Shout out to that brother. Now, before we get up out of here, brother, because you one of the smartest brothers I know. You've done a lot for me. Um, like I said, we you know how we rotate. You know, met this brother, South Central LA, right there on, was it 42nd, 43rd, 43rd. 43rd and Crenshaw at the McDonald's. Man, he right there, he pulled up on us. You know what I'm saying? Him and Slim, you know what I'm saying? In the BM, pulled Shout up on us. So yeah. it's we, we go back. So, you know. Before Drake said it, we don't do no new friends. You know, it's family. You know, it's an affair, and that's and that's how we do it. So to get good brothers around you who can share with you experiences, and those experiences that they share with you and the love that they have for you can put you in a better position. That's why I always say relationships is important. That's why me and this brother have a great relationship. We don't agree all the time, but we gonna sit down and we gonna talk about it. So before we get up out of here, brother. I like to ask brothers, man, who are fathers, and especially a brother like you who has a daughter, who um, Ari, she's special. Ain't, ain't no, ain't no young lady like her. She, my son, love her. Zaire love her every time. So just to have a daughter, school. What is? What would you say in this day and age? is the most important or some of the most important things with society being so raw and uncut, with sex being out there, with homosexuality being out there, uh, racism, um, even interracial marriages and trying to, you know, take the black woman from the black man and put into the hand of the enemy. So what do you think is some of the most important things that you need to instill in your daughter who ain't no telling how this world gonna be looking by the time she getting ready for high school what is some of the things that you instill in your daughter so that she is wise above? All right, well, first you. thing I tell her is be you. Be you. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> I'm not judgmental, but um, one thing about it is, is like with our relationship right now, due to 
the custody situation right now. Um, it's a little weird, but when I do have time with her, I'm not on her, but I'm like building our relationship, our bond. One thing about it is, is I never want my daughter to ever feel she can't come and talk to me about anything that's going on. You know what I'm saying? So for me, it's kind of like with all the sh with all the stuff and all the bullshit that's going on in the world right now, um, she's going to get a different aspect that I can't even see from now. She's five. So like what she's seeing right now or what she's comprehending right now, I won't even understand when she's 10 and 15. I just have to take it as it comes. And for me, I need to stay young and stay mindful that I need to keep up with the times and understand them. So it's like... We have to move with the times and use our aspects of our life and how we were guided and how our morals and principles and then implement them into what's actually going on in the world at that time when she's at that age when a lot of the shit's going to be going on. So that's just basically how I feel. I can't predict. I can't say anything to a five-year-old that's going to like throw her off. I have to just understand her growth process make sure that my morals and principles are implemented in her life and then from there i have to let her blossom into whatever she wants to become but also you know guide her along the way you know what i'm saying that's so real. you know that's real you know real. but but i also you also have to understand i'm dealing with it. it's both sides of the of the spectrum like she has a mother we don't know how she's going to develop her, you know what I'm saying? Because that's where she spends most of her time. We don't know what she's telling her, what she's implementing in her life. If she feels that that's the right way to go, or if she feels that this is the right way to go, or implement both of our lives or both of our teachings into herself. You see what I'm saying? So if, and this is one thing that we don't have a great relationship right now, but when we do come together... This is something that we have to be on the same accord with, like explaining and understanding certain aspects of life. And we don't see life the same way. You know what I'm saying? And that's why ultimately we're not together now. You know? Man, that's real. And that's just, you know, shows a real man that can explain all that and to understand that and know like, hey, things are where it is now. And know even with your daughter, like, hey, I can implement who I am into her, my principles, my morals, but let her blossom and grow and then continue the development from there. So man, that's that's very a beautiful thing, man. And just to touch on all those. All right, so now earlier you were touching about, you know, not having the best relationship right now with the mother of your child. Now, we don't want to get too much in your business, but it's a lot of brothers who are going through the same thing you going through, if not worse. So what would you say started that to where it kind of broke that 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 vein of the All right, so I'm going to just start from the beginning. I'm going to just start from the beginning. Oh shit. So he uncut too. I'm going to give it I'm going to give it the truth. So me and my baby me and my baby mama met um at 18 um shit. When we met, I was at a different aspect in my life. I just met at 18. At 18. Wow. So I just moved back from uh from Memphis, Tennessee, you know. So I had a different I had a different um aspect in the way I saw shit. You know, I had moved back to LA. And so when I met her, I was like, uh, this ain't my type. Mm. Now you now you knew right there that she wasn't your type? But still decided to like see Visually. Her visually. I'm yeah. like, this ain't me. You know what I'm saying? I knew what I wanted. I knew what I had in my mind of what I wanted. And I knew what I used to deal with when I was in LA. You see what I'm saying? So me being in Memphis kind of, I wouldn't say clouded my judgment, but it, it gave me a different aspect to life of different from LA. You know, nigga, I used to, <laughs> yeah, I had, I had them joints uh, before I moved to Memphis. You know what I'm saying? And being in Memphis, you know, you, you still kind of got them. Hey, man, yeah, hey, man, okay. hey, man, you know. But when you're in Memphis, bro, you can't be picky and choosy. You know what I'm saying? You got to just, uh, you got to fuck with who fuck with you. So should I come back? You know what I'm saying? Like these Milwaukee bitches. <laughs> Go ahead. When I come back, I meet her. 
cool. I met her. I met her with my dog Frank. Shout out to Frank, man. I love you, bro. But um, I met her with Frank. She was at some little car club shit. She, she was on curfew. She was late for curfew. You feel me? But I ended up meeting her as I, you know, time progressed. You okay. feel me? Um, shit, we saw her sitting in the car. I had her sitting there for probably like 15, 20 minutes. Mind you, she. I didn't holler at her like, hey, pull over. Woo. And I got, I got. It's five of us in the car. I'm like, man, I don't even want the bitch. You get her. You get her. You get her. I'm hollering at the hummus. Don't nobody want to jump out and get the bitches. I say, fuck it. I'm going to go holler at her. I go holler at the bitch. She give me her number. She, I'm giving you the game, bro. Start to finish, bro. No one it. has this info except the people that, the five people that was in that car. So I get her number, whatever. I'm hitting her. I'm fresh from Memphis. You know what I'm saying? You know, uh, Frank called me the next day. He like, hey, did you ever get up with old girl who number you got? I'm like, bro, I got like six bitches numbers, bro. Which one? And then he like, did you call all of them? I said, yeah. So that day, three of them pulled up on us, and she was included in that. So we was, you know, we had her meet us across the street at the little taco spot. So we there, we chilling. I'm hollering at her. She done jumped out the car now. Now I'm like, um, you know. Shout out, shout out, shout out to my um, my plus size, whatever. You know, she was a little, you know, she was a little bigger than what I liked. You feel me? A little nose tackle. Yeah, but she was she was beautiful in the face though. So okay. I'm like, all right. Um, <laughs> y'all niggas crazy, but you know, <laughs> a little nose tackle. I hate you. <laughs> hey, but you know, football baby, go pack, go. Shout out to all my linebackers, but um, <laughs> yeah, she um, she had a. She had okay. a pretty face though. So I'm like, all right, she got some potential. I love him too. Yeah, she, I was like, she got some potential, fuck it. So I fucked with her for probably like a week, two weeks. And then um, I'm like, man, I started realizing like, just from being in Memphis, I had grew up fast. I'm like, man, let me see how I can implement her into my life. So like, I didn't have a car at the time. You so I'm like, what, what position right, what position she could play. So I'm like, call her up. Hey, where you at? Hey, I'm hungry, come get me. She live in Long Beach, I live in South Central. That's a 25, 30 minute drive without traffic. Yeah, without traffic. I so know. I'm like, all right, bet. She pulling up, bop, take me to get some food. I'm like, all right, get up out of here, type shit. So she would just dip and go home. So I'm like, all right. So I'm like, cool. So then I hit her again, bop, where you at? She like, oh, I'm at the house. Okay, bet, like, shit, I'm over here chilling. Come, come fuck with me, bop. She come fuck with me, whatever. Like, all right, like, she in tune, like, she, later she on, <laughs> later on, I realized, excuse me, from talking with my uncle and them, like, you got to fuck with someone who fuck with you. And I think I took that into perspective and I embraced that. She really fucked with me. Mind yeah, you, I had other bitches, too. I had other bitches I was fucking with, you know what I'm saying? You know, I had some, uh, I'm not going to say their names, but I had some celebrities, daughters and shit. Okay. But, okay. you know, they was, um... Granddaughters too, you we know who lying. you are. We ain't lying. But um, yeah, I'm like, I used to even have her drop me off at their house. The house is, you know what I'm saying? Like, hey, come get me. I need to go somewhere, do whatever. Drop me off. You know what I'm saying? She would do it. And then as you know, time progressed. I'm like, I think I'm a fuck with her. You know what I'm saying? I hit her. She said. I, I was her first or whatever, but you know, they all say that. But, um, <laughs> you know, I don't want to get into her personal life, but right, yeah, right, maybe right. I was your first, who knows? But, um, yeah, um, yeah, so, yeah, so I, I, you know, she was like, what are we doing? Like, are you just fucking me or like, you're not fucking me and being in a relationship without being in a relationship. And so, I was like, fuck it, we together then. And so it's crazy that she kind of forced it upon me, but. You say she forced it upon you. Like, you, like, like, she like nigga, if you, you gonna, a, if you wanna hit this pussy, we in a relationship. You gotta be in a relationship. And I'm so at the time, you said you wasn't ready to be in a committed relationship. 100% I wasn't. Committed, because she wanted yeah. that commitment. Yeah. Okay. But that was when I was thinking with my dick. I'm like, hey, that little thing, fire. <laughs> uh, yeah, like. We gon' we gon' we gon' normalize me hitting right. that pussy right, right. now. Okay. That's what so, I was yeah. on. 